Hi guys, Vincent here, and this is the Binet 8498 new pattern. <music> The Bionet 8498 new pattern is a half style Bionet with a straight blade, metal handle and two wooden grip pieces. The scabbard is made from steel and the Bionet is designed with a single H shaped Mauser Bionet mounting system. It can be used with the Gewehr 98 as well as with the Carbine 98, later also called Carbine 98AZ. And just to answer some of your questions about the sawback. As they did with most Bionets for the infantry, 6% of the regular produced bayonets had a sawback. Mine just happens to be one of those 6%. Overall, this bayonet is 385mm long. The blade itself measures 250mm in length, it is 25mm wide and 6mm thick. Without the scabbard, the 8498 new pattern weighs roughly 420 grams. Let's get to the interesting part. The history. After its unification in 1871, the newly formed German Empire adopted the Mauser Rifle 71 as its new standard infantry rifle. And everything was good with this 11mm single shot black powder rifle until the Russo Turkish War of 1877-1878. Most historians think that this was the first conflict where magazine fed repeating rifles were really noticed by major European military powers and suddenly everybody wanted to have magazine rifles. And Germany was no exception. After some years of trials, in 1884, Germany adopted the Mauser Infantry Rifle 7184. And it seems like Germany suffered from a short moment of modern thinking because the bayonet they were going to adopt together with this new rifle was a very modern looking NAV style bayonet. This was even more noticeable because nearly every other military power at this time still used long bladed sword style bayonets or the good old socket bayonet. The modern bayonet I'm talking about is of course the infantry bayonet 71-84. But as light and handy as it was, the S7184 had a very short service life. In the late 1880s, Germany adopted the 8mm Gewehr 88 and together with this rifle, they reissued their old infantry sword bayonets 1871. This was done because the German Army High Command feared that in a bayonet fight, the person with a shorter rifle and bayonet combination would most likely lose. But the 7184 was still out there in large numbers and there were still units who were not supposed to fight in close quarter combat anyhow, and they really could use the light and easy to wear bayonet 7184. These troops would be the bicycle units, machine gun companies, zeppelin troops and so on. After the German army adopted the Gewehr 98 in 1898, those troops had to look for a different bayonet. In the early 1900s, the KS-98 a short bayonet 98 was adopted and given to machine gunners and the Imperial Colonial Protection Forces, but as nice as it looks, it is really very expensive to produce and they didn't have the numbers to issue every man who needed a short bayonet with these KS-98 bayonets. So what the army came up with in 1905 was the new bayonet 8498. This was basically just a bayonet 7184 with a ground down muzzle ring and a reformed handle to fit the Mauser 98 style of bayonet mounting. The blade and therefore also the scabbard stayed completely the same and this meant that this new bayonet was much much cheaper and faster to produce than the KS-98 and everybody was happy again. But roughly 10 years later a new conflict broke out and this time it would change the world. The First World War changed the way of fighting. Trench warfare was now the way to go and when you look at the weapons and especially at the bayonets that Germany used in 1914, you will quickly realize that those weapons were not designed for this new, modern type of conflict. Most of these bayonets had very long blades or they were expensive to produce and most of them used leather scabbards. 
new generation of bayonets was needed. They needed to be shorter, rugged, cheap, quick to produce and use metal scabbards to save leather for boots and belts. In 1915, one of these new pattern of bayonets was ready. The bayonet 8498 new pattern was everything the German soldier needed from a bayonet during the First World War. The overall appearance of the bayonet 8498 new pattern is very similar to the first 8498, now called the 8498 old pattern. But one of the most important features of this new pattern may not be so easy to spot. It is the installation of a flash guard at the back of the handle. This was done so everybody with a carbine 98 could use his weapon with a mounted bayonet without blowing the wooden grips to pieces while firing. This was needed because the bayonet mounting rail of the carbine 98 is directly under the muzzle. This way you could have a shorter rifle and still use the standard bayonet, but you expose the wooden grips. And when the carbine 98 was used more and more during the conflict, the flash guard became an essential part of these new style of bayonets. Together with its sister bayonet, the other new pattern bayonet, the S9805, the 8498 new pattern would become the new German bayonet throughout the whole war. Oh, and by the way, it was so successful in that, in 1927 it became the new standard bayonet for the whole armed forces of the Weimar Republic and later Nazi Germany and served until 1945. And now let's take a closer look at the markings and stamps. We are going to check the manufacturer markings, the proof marks, the property stamp on the back of the blade and unit markings if there are any. The manufacturer here is Erfurt. I also made a list of all the other producers for this type of bayonet. If you're interested you can hold the video here and go through it with all the time you need. Oh, and just to let you know, the old pattern was produced from 1905 until 1915 and the new pattern from 1915 until 1917. And before you ask, I really don't know why they stopped production of this marvelous bonnet in 1917. We are going to continue with our proof marks. This time I really can't read the letter, but it's where it's supposed to be and so we're good. The property stamp is W15 and this indicates that the spinet becomes state property in 1915 when the ruling monarch was Kaiser Wilhelm II. The property stamp is also the easiest way to tell the difference between an imperial era bayonet and a later Weimar or even Nazi Germany bayonet. Property stamps stopped in 1918, so everything after that will not have a property stamp. And now to the unit markings. Since this is a wartime production bayonet, there actually should not be any unit marking at all. An order was given to all troops in late 1914 to stop unit markings all of the weapons. This saves time and it was found out that it was quite easy for the enemy to gain intelligence about German troops movement by just looking at the unit markings on captured rifles or bayonets. But this order was sometimes disobeyed and you can find these wartime unit markings on some weapons produced during the Great War. Most of the time these unit markings don't follow the unit marking regulations and are stamped just the way the regimental gunsmith wanted them to look like. This makes them sometimes hard to translate. In our case we just have what I believe is a company number paired with the individual weapon number. From what battalion or regiment or even what kind of unit Cavalry, infantry, artillery could be everything, I just have no idea. Alright guys, this is all I have to say about this bayonet and um, really really thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me to know that so many people out there are interested in German bayonets just as I am. Do you have an 8498 in your collection? What property stamp is on the back of the blade and does it have unit marking? Please answer in the comments below. And if you have any other question regarding Prussian or Imperial German bayonets or swords, you can just ask me in the comments or write me a mail. My mail address is in the description. If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but 
I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.